Good morning, Richard. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Jen. It's great to be here. It is great to have you. Now, there's going to be lots of people in our uh, congregation today that has, have never met you, and it's a real opportunity using uh, technology to have you join us. Indeed. So you're the of Tasmania. Yes. Yeah. Um, yep. How did you end up in Tasmania? You're a Queensland boy. I'm a Queensland boy, yep. Grew up in Brisbane. My dad had a pharmacy in West End uh, in Brisbane uh, growing up and we lived in the south side of Brisbane the whole of my life uh, until I went to university. I've slowly been waking, making my way down the uh, eastern seaboard. I had some time in Armidale and then some time in Melbourne and uh, came to Tassie four years ago uh, when I was elected bishop here, and we just love it. It's a little bit uh, cooler than, uh, than Queensland, but we love it. Uh, it's a really ter terrific place to live. Fantastic. So Bishop of Tasmania, that is um, a big job of it yep. in and of itself. Um, but you're also the chair of GAFCON Australia. I am, yeah. I've been doing that uh, for quite a few years, a few years now, yeah. Okay. So um, why would you try and balance two huge jobs like that? Because, um, well, I, I made a decision uh, when I was a university student to, to become an Anglican. So I had grown up in the Uniting Church and when I got to uni, I uh, encountered Anglicans for the first time. And the thing I loved about them was uh, they taught me the Bible and it came alive to me and I really just uh, understood it. In fact, it was quite similar to the Uniting Church I'd grown up in. And uh, th there they were really uh, bringing me forward in the faith. And I decided that uh, I was going to go into ministry and Anglican, the Anglican Church seemed to be uh, the right place for me to be. And now I've, kind of, by God's grace and some miracle, I ended up being a bishop in the Anglican Church of Australia. But I'm so, I'm so committed to the Anglican Church being a wonderful vehicle for the gospel uh, for changing uh, Australia and changing our lives, uh, that I wanted to do anything I could to make uh, Anglicanism better, uh, both here in my diocese, but also across the country and across the world. And uh, the GAFCON movement has really been, uh, I guess, one way I've been able to contribute uh, internationally and nationally uh, to, uh, I, I guess, the, 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 the flourishing of the Anglican church. Okay, so we've heard a lot of things about GAFCON. Um, yeah. There's lots of uh, information that floats around, true and false. Can you tell us, please, what is GAFCON and why does it exist? Yeah, sure. So GAFCON's a movement, uh, but it was born out of a conference uh, called the Global Anglican Future Conference uh, in Jerusalem in 2008. And uh, Global Anglican Future spelt GAF. Con, uh, and that's become the name for the movement. And uh, the movement really exists uh, to promote and encourage traditional, faithful Anglican doctrine and practice. We, we Anglicans are Anglicans because of what we believe. We're, we're Bible people. Our prayer books were designed to get people reading and studying the Bible. In fact, I think I can think of no other denomination that, that has the Bible so much up front and central as uh, Anglican liturgy has it. Uh, back in the early 2000s, uh, some faithful leaders became concerned that the Anglican church worldwide, particularly in the West, were moving away from these biblical roots. And I was starting to revise the church's doctrine and practice away from the Bible's teaching. The presenting issue, of course, was human sexuality but, uh, and more lately marriage. But the deeper issue was whether we accept the Bible as authoritative uh, in uh, setting what we believe. Uh, some progressives were doubting Jesus' historical life, his actual death, his bodily resurrection, saying that sexual relationships outside of marriage were okay in God's sight. And that, that, those things are clearly against the Bible's teaching. And so to reset Anglican doctrine, the first Global Anglican Future Conference was held in 2008 and produced in Jerusalem the Jerusalem Declaration. And it was a, a declaration that affirmed classic, historic, faithful Anglican teaching applied to some of the contemporary questions. And I think uh, if, you, if you read that, and I know you have, but if, if others haven't read that, they'll read it and they'll go, wow, this sounds like the Constitution of the Anglican Church of Australia, because it has uh, many of the same elements to it, but applying it particularly to the questions uh, today. That movement now has had three conferences uh, worldwide. It probably represents somewhere above 70% of the world's worshipping Anglicans. 
So not 70% of the national churches, but 70% of the, the world's worshipping Anglicans, because the average Anglican is no longer an ageing white middle class person living in London, but actually a 26 year old African woman living off the land. That Africa is really the heart of uh, the Anglican communion today. So uh, here we are, a, a, a movement to try and encourage faithful Anglican doctrine. Right. So one of the things that we hear a lot is that GAFCON is trying to split the church. Is there any truth in that? No, oh, absolutely not. Uh, I think GAFCON is, is trying, in fact, I know it is, its aim is to unite faithful Anglicans around our historic faith. Uh, we, we, we pray what we believe, the Anglicans. So the doctrine that's in our prayer books, I've got one sitting here on my desk, uh, the doctrine that's in our prayer books, uh, the, the, that comes from the Book of Common Prayer, the, the ordinal, the 39 articles of religion. They're the formularies. Those in the GAFCON movement haven't shifted in our understanding of, of that Anglican doctrine. What we have done is put doctrine in the primary place and the structures of the Anglican communion in second place. Sadly, some in our denomination are walking away from the faith once delivered to the saints. That's a quote from the letter to, of Jude. Uh, but they are doing it within the structures of the Anglican communion. So there'll be bishops who no longer hold to creedal Anglican Catholic faith who are invited to participate in the Lambeth Conference, one of the structures, uh, when it's held next year. Gafcon has said, we're not in fellowship with people who no longer hold to Anglican doctrine because we are what we believe. Fellowship is defined by shared belief, not structures. And therefore, we want to unite around doctrine. So there are people who are splitting the Anglican church worldwide. GAFCON are the ones who are tr one of many people who are, who are trying to uphold faithful Anglican doctrine and unite people around what we believe. So uniting, Does that make sense? Yeah, uniting in the gospel. Correct. Yeah. Beautiful. That's beautiful. So, okay. So then is GAFCON... Um, anti-gay, uh, anti-same-sex marriage. Is that the only issue that GAFCON's got? Look, uh, certainly human sexuality was the presenting issue that got things started back in, uh, in the 2000s. Uh, there was a consecration of an actively homosexual bishop in North America, and that issue uh, became a bit of a, a, a sort of flashpoint. Uh, and it was an issue because it was against the Bible's teaching. Even, even liberal scholars agree that the Bible teaches that homosexual sex is sinful. The question is, can the Bible be set aside in favour of our own understanding? Uh, uh, marriage, for example, same-sex marriage. Ma marriage cuts what I call a thematic arc through the Bible from uh, Adam and Eve in Genesis to Jesus teaching in marriage right through to the marriage supper of the lamb in the book of Revelation. Marriage is important. Our, our prayer books say every marriage points us to the union of Christ with his church. Uh, all marriages in that arc are unity in diversity. We, we are unified to Christ even though we are so sinful and he is so perfect. Humanity is made in the image of God, male and female. He created them, Genesis says. Now, the revisionists want us, who want us to endorse same-sex marriage, want us to set aside the Bible's ark and replace marriage with unity without diversity, which is really the heart of how the Bible understands marriage. So, yes, they, these matters are matters we are thinking about and talking about, but they're matters we're talking about because the Bible's at stake, because the authority of the Bible is at stake. So the heart of GAFCON is not a, a stand on sexuality. In fact, I think I've probably heard sexuality talked about oh, maybe on three occasions in all of my kind of public, maybe four occasions in all of my public involvement with, with GAFCON. What we're really what, concerned about is the authority and application of the Bible. And I'm much more concerned, I am much more concerned about bishops who deny the bodily resurrection of Christ, who deny the efficacy of his death for our sins as our substitute, the final judgment of the world. And you can find many bishops and Anglican ministers who deny those things. 
all, all of those things are Anglican doctrine. They're all grounded in the word of God and, and, and are lost in many parts of the Anglican world. And GAFCON's really here to try and recover those biblical teachings. Sure. So, so what we're saying is that um, do we allow scripture to, to colour how we see the world or do we allow the world to colour how we see scripture? I think that's right. And I think one of the great uh, temptations in the modern age is to think that we know better, that we're more enlightened than the Bible writers were. And uh, we, we do know things that the Bible writers didn't know, but there is an enduring nature to the teaching that is there. And that's why I don't, I don't like to sort of cherry pick the, the Bible texts about marriage or homosexuality, for example, but actually look at the arc of the Bible. Look at the whole Bible. It, it, it holds together from Genesis to Revelation with a, with a view and if you start tinkering with that, you, you kind of set the Bible aside and it gets replaced with modern thinking. And I think that's the great, the thing we really need to resist uh, in the world. We've got to change our practice, don't get me wrong. What we as Anglicans do, I think this is part of an Anglican principle as well. Uh, we were worshiping the language of the people. And I think uh, it was culturally revolutionary uh, in the 16th century to have uh, worship in the, in the English language. Uh, right now, today, we're having this, this cultural revolution of uh, using modern technology. Uh, they, that technology was modern technology. About, and then it was the prayer book and, and printed word uh, in English. Today, it's this format. And I think we're trying to embrace this now as a way of communicating those ancient truths. So this is as Anglican as the prayer book was way back then. But, but what, what holds us together is the, is the doctrine in the middle of that. Yeah, beautiful. So uh, another, another um, rumour that gets about is that um, GAFCON is anti-women or anti-women in ministry. Um, yeah. What have you got to say for that? Oh, no, totally. That, that's not true. Uh, there, there are ordained women in the movement. There are women uh, on the board of GAFCON Australia, ordained women on the board of GAFCON Australia. Uh, I, I'm, the, I'm the chair of GAFCON Australia. I'm the Bishop of the Diocese of Tasmania, where we ordain women. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if that, if that were the case. Uh, and that's true in many parts of the GAFCON movement. Of course, right across the Anglican world, the acceptance of women in ordained ministry is uh, not universal. Uh, it's, it's different in different parts of the Anglican world, even here in Australia. But the difference, of course, is the ordination of women is a matter of order rather than a matter of doctrine. And, and there's a certain liberty over matters of order uh, in the Anglican uh, world uh, where there's not liberty over matters of doctrine, which are, are the issues around sexuality and the atonement and the resurrection of Jesus and those other key, the identity of Christ, those other key things uh, that that. Uh, are really the, the issue. So I, I, I like to think that uh, GAFCON's a bit like the Anglican communion was prior to 2003 when that uh, first uh, bishop was consecrated in North America. It's, it's broad and it kind of includes lots of different people and with, with different views about matters like uh, women's ordination, but um, are united in, in the doctrine. Yeah, perfect. So then what's GAFCON's vision for the church um, and for the Australian church in particular? Oh, sure. Uh, look, I think uh, GAFCON wants to see thriving, healthy, biblically faithful Anglican churches right across the world. That's what we're wanting to do. And we're working with people who are doing that. I've got friends who are GAFCON bishops in North America, uh, in Canada and the US, and their great desire is to plant new churches to reach more people, to proclaim the great news of Jesus uh, and uh, tell people about him and call people to be his uh, disciples. And that's what we want to happen uh, right across Australia. So GAFCON Australia, our, our first goal is to promote biblically orthodox Anglicanism. And we want to hold out the ancient gospel 
uh, the, um, when I was a kid, I used to go with my dad who was a lay preacher. And I remember uh, going to a nursing home where they used to love to sing, tell me the old, old story. You know, that wonderful old hymn of the old, old story that has never changed of Jesus and his love. Uh, and that's the ancient gospel that's been handed down to us. We want to keep doing that. We want to do it in contemporary ways and effective ways. Gacon loves the variety of uh, Anglicanism around the world. Uh, we love the, the Anglo-Catholics and the, and the Evangelicals and the Charismatics, all those different streams of Anglicanism. We love all of that, pretty much Anglican ministry as it's always been. And we'll try and support that wherever it can be found. So that's our vision, uh, is to see biblically flourishing uh, uh, Anglican churches. We will, of course, oppose false teaching and leaders who pull us away from biblical doctrine because we're, we're Bible people, we're Anglicans, and that's what we're called to do. To set a, I, in one of my bishop's vows is to set aside doctrine contrary to the word of God, and, and I'll continue to do that uh, while I've got uh, breath in my lungs. Uh, but we, we also want to gather faithful Anglicans who want to be part of this movement. So it, I, I love to see Gathcon not as what it's against, but what it's for, for flourishing churches that love to introduce people to the Lord Jesus. Wow, that's, that's a beautiful vision. Thank you. So how do we find out more about GAFCON? How do we get involved? Sure. So uh, GAFCON Australia has a website, www.gafcon.org.au. And uh, there, there's information about what we're doing. You can read the Jerusalem Declaration there. You can download, uh, we've run a couple of conferences in Australia. You can download uh, some really great, uh, talks about ministry in Australia uh, and uh, the challenges that are here uh, from the website there. We put up occasional papers. There's a newsletter you can subscribe to. It doesn't cost you anything, uh, but connects you with others who also want to see flourishing uh, Anglican parishes and ministries right across the country. So www.gafcon.org.au and uh, you can sign up. Uh, as a member or an interested person uh, on the website there. That is fantastic. Thank you so much. Look, Terrific. thank you so much for joining us um, at St Luke's. Um, it's been an absolute um, joy to have you with us, to hear your passion for the gospel and um, to see you again. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, That's look, it's, it's a delight and I already feel warmer uh, just talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We'll try and send you some sunshine. Um, Great. Let me pray for you and for GAFCON and then we'll say goodbye. Thank you. Lord, Thanks very much. Jim. Lord, I thank you so much for Bishop Richard um, and for his family, for Helen, for their passion for the gospel. Lord, we thank you for their service to Tasmania and to our national church and to the global church. Lord, we pray that this passion will be infectious, that it will infuse throughout our church, that the gospel will be a point of unification for all Anglicans in Australia and around the world. Lord, as we go forward, we just ask that your hand be on this ministry, that many will come to hear about it, that many will be interested and get involved. Lord, let us be faithful to your word above all else in the mm. name of Christ. Mm. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you very much, Jen. Um, and yeah. hopefully we'll be able to have you back another time. That'll be lovely. Brilliant. Yes. Thanks, God. God bless you.